socially it's easy. <laughs> Actually, no, it's, you know what?
So you go in the middle. <laughs> okay. You should sit here. No, you're there. You didn't talk about the golf. I'm not talking about the golf. No, you didn't talk about the golf. You talked about it. You saved it. How many goals did you score for Liverpool? A hundred and... Yeah, 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 I remember. No Champions League Cup, was it? No European Cup. I should have bought him. Yeah, yeah, it was a Roma. Yeah. Roma, but yeah, we had... Yeah, but if you bought me, I wouldn't have gone to Liverpool. 86. <laughs> but there were only two foreign players. <laughs> the only two foreign players. And which two did you have? Falcao and Cerezo. Yeah. Roberto Falcao. Roberto Falcao, yeah. No, right. So we couldn't. But that was very close. Some years ago. <laughs> Sorry, no, no. we're destroying everything. Oh, no, no, I can't, I can't join into that conversation. It's good to listen to. It. Right, shall I start then? Sven, it's lovely to see you. Um, first of all, tell us about the Liverpool connection, why you always wanted to be a Liverpool manager, why you're still a Liverpool fan. Well, my father uh, was a Liverpool fan. He's still a Liverpool fan, he still lives. So I, it came from there. And then, you know, in Sweden, they started something called Tips Extra. So every Saturday you could see one game. This is when all the games went on Saturday. So Liverpool, Liverpool, I, I got it in 79, something like that, I think. I wrote to the club and asked if I could come to see a training session. And they answered and invited me. So I saw a game and saw some trainings. I was honoured to go into the booth room of Liverpool at that time. And that was great, fantastic. So, and I mean, during many, many years in Liverpool, they were dominated the football in Europe. I played them twice with Benfica. We lost here, 1-0. So we went back and said, no, we take them in second. It was quarter-final in... in uh, European Cup. We lost 5-1 at home. <laughs> so, yeah, Liverpool. And they're still doing great. So what does it mean to you to be part of the Liverpool management team for this game <laughs> Well, it's like a dream. Uh, and uh, I could never rant about that. But when I was a uh, manager, I always dreamt about Liverpool, but that never happened. It was close once, it was some discussion once. With oh, this, how long was that? Uh, many years ago. Who was a big, big <coughs> name in football in Liverpool. Not a player, a director. David Moore. What? David Moore. No, 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 before that. Oh, John yeah. <laughs> what? That's yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> it never happened. But now <laughs> it happens, and uh, when I when I asked, I thought it was a joke. But uh, they contacted me via my son, Johan. So I said, "Of course, I will come to that." And then it's a charity, which makes it even more more uh, lovely. So that'd be great to see. We have to beat Ajax, or. Absolutely, because it all happens to managers when they lose. <laughs> so that's why, I'm the, that's why I'm happy to be the assistant manager. <laughs> but, you know, listen, the greatest thing about it really is, is, is 59,000 people going. 
I mean, I started playing in, 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 I'm not playing because I'm obviously injured and a bit old to play now, but, and they were taken, they weren't taken very seriously. And some fans will turn up sometimes, you know, 10,000. But this is going to be the biggest crowd apart from the Man City game. And with the players who are going to be playing, they're young, they're fit, well, they're younger than me, and they're a bit competitive. So I suppose I used to feel, not that we were ever cheating the fans, because the fans want to see the old players, but we would never really put on much of a, a show because, of course, a lot of the English players, when they retire, probably let themselves go a little bit too much, whereas the European players don't. So having been involved in the Legends matches recently, seeing the quality and um, the speed and the size, and Ajax are bringing quality on the team as well. But the most important thing, as Fenner said, is the foundation. You know, they've helped 120,000 people this year. And as much as we're all here today because it is the, 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 a big game, and we love it, the foundation is every single week, every single day, the work that they actually do. And that's what we have to appreciate. You know, everyone just looks at this and thinks that this is a one-off. This may be a one-off in terms of raising the money we're going to make, but in terms of what the work they actually do, keeping kids off the street, you know, as I said, over 120,000 people raising over £2 million for ongoing work with charitable organisations in, in Liverpool. And this is the unseen work that no one sees. And for me, this is what Liverpool Football Club's all about. Yes, it's great. Oh, please, the Champions League and the league is fantastic. <laughs> but in terms of giving back to, a, to, to the community, um, which is a lot of unseen work that people don't know about. Um, so the more we can shout it from the rooftops on an occasion like this, but also focus on the fact that it's not just, this is not it. This is where we're going to get some money to continue work that, uh, that, is con that is continued with the team every single day at schools, charities, organizations. So, yeah, I think that that is really the message I want to give because people think, oh, they've turned up for one day and they're going to make money and then that's it. You know, they don't see the work that's done by people every single day um, who no one knows about, uh, which I think we should be shouting about. John, Sven started that he never bought you as a player as well. Did you know that and how much are you looking forward to being yeah. on the touchline working with him? I did know um, because of course in the 80s when I remember Luther Bissell went to AC Milan in 1984 and in the 80s they were all going to Italy. There's Maradona, Platini, they're all there and of course coming from Watford at the time this was a little bit before this was before I came to Liverpool probably about Sven was there 85, 86, 84 to 87. I think about 85 it was and of course you know if you've ever been to Rome you know it's not a bad place to live. Not as nice as the world. <laughs> Obviously, it's not as nice as the world. But, um, yeah, and it was a thing that would have happened. But and, and it was fate, because if it was now, I probably would go, because you're only allowed two foreign players. And the reason was they already had two foreign players, so I couldn't be the, they couldn't have a third foreign player. Um, but I'm glad it didn't happen, because I probably would not have been at Liverpool. Now get the chance to work with him. I haven't, of course. We, we, we know I've known Sven for many years. We had an agent together, so I've known him for many years, and we've, we've kept in touch. And I've now got the opportunity to be his assistant alongside John Aldridge and Ian Rush. <laughs> so uh, I think I'll be the one who'll be doing all the work. I don't think Rush and Alder are going to be doing too much. <laughs> so I think looking at the list, it's only Stephen Gerrard that you've managed in your career at the Liverpool Legends. Right? Yes, it yes. Back, it brings back good memories. I mean, one memory I can remember in particular is the 5 1 over in Germany because I was there reporting on that as well. What a player. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be very nice to see him. Of course. He's not the same player. Don't well. expect that. He's not the same player now. No, it's a few years later. Of course not. But <laughs> I think with his mentality, he no, will he still is. move mountains. Have you missed since you finished that? If I said no, I would lie. Yeah, of course you miss it, but I realize uh, that I have a certain age, and at my age you shouldn't be a manager. So I, it's okay. I, what I have done, I have done, and I'm happy about that. Now it's over. Almost. This will be the last game, I suppose. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah, well, I knew there was something happening the weekend. I think it first got mentioned because my phone was a bit more active than uh, it normally is over the weekend. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, it's amazing. I think it just goes to show when I think football supporters and fans get together uh, behind an idea, and especially Liverpool fans. Um, and I think it shows. Fen said that you know his dad still is a Liverpool fan. He's a Liverpool fan. Um, and I think that's the family coming together. I think John's answer of what the reaction is. You know, to have to be to sell out the, the bigger Anfield for a a charity match, um, a charity event to have nearly 60,000 people inside the stadium shows what it means. Obviously not just because Sven's here, but he's a big part of it. Um, 
and the last few years we've been fortunate enough to they were there about sell out, but to have that in there, um, for just, you know, to, to raise the money that it does is, is amazing. Yeah, just put into context as well what it means to the foundation to get that kind of support because John's alluded to it as well, shouting from the rooftops about the work that the foundation does. Yeah, well, it's huge. I mean, I think when uh, colleagues at other clubs say, what? You sold out a, you know, a, a charity game. So I think, as John said, other clubs do it, and some do it well, but there's not many that, that sell out on a regular basis. I think that we, we've had, we have our sort of work externally verified, and putting it simplistically, for every pound we generate, we turn it into 14 quid's worth of social value. And that, and I think just over 90% of that is in the Liverpool City region. Um, you know, this isn't... This is a great place to, to live and work and, and uh, raise your kids. It's definitely a great place to watch football, but there's some people in our communities that are, are banging need, and that's where we that's where we operate. And I think all, all the money, or uh, the large percentage of the money we raise, um, which will hopefully be just over a million pounds um, raised, that will all go uh, to support our, our work in the full city region, and most of it uh, to support our education programs which we run in partnerships with, with, with schools across the region. It also supports the, um, the four of the Reds, you know, the, the, the old yeah. players. You know, a lot of it goes to them as well because, of course, as players get older, um, they have issues, uh, as we all do. And um, I think that that side of football was probably neglected maybe 10, 15 years ago. The old adage, of course, when you finish, you've gone and, you know, you see so many old players who, you know, just disappeared and no one really thought about them. Whereas Liverpool are very strong in, in supporting the old players, and we still see them every week when they come in. And of course, some of them are—I mean, I'm old enough, but some of them are, you know, much older than me. And um, it's good to see that that foundation does does support them as well. Just finally, for me, because we're conscious of going on too, too long. You've and, always done that. I know. Nothing it's new. Been a problem, right? Sven will remember as England manager. <laughs> uh, but Sven, obviously, Jurgen extended the invite initially to you as well. I just wonder if you been able to have any kind of chat with Jürgen as he wished you luck for tomorrow. Have you been able to wish him luck for what comes next in his career within finishing at Liverpool at the end of the season? That, that's a surprise for me. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't spoken to him, but uh, it was very, very kind of him to make an invitation. And, uh, well, one day I will come. <laughs> but uh, he's doing a great job. So, I'm I am said that he is going to leave. You think he'll complete the travel? I, I, I don't know. Well, I think Liverpool will win the league. They can't win the FA Cup, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, they play very good football and coming youth, young players coming up, players which I never saw. Suddenly they put, and he put them in, in very important games as well. You need a lot of courage to do that. So it's it's nice to see that Liverpool is great and Liverpool will be great even in the future, looking at the young players. Thank you very much. If I can just ask, when you came to Liverpool as, as a young coach in 1979, what part did that play in sort of your football learning process? Well... <coughs> I think at that time, and I think that uh, philosophy lives in Liverpool, it was just about to do it simple, they said. And all the training sessions, was they were playing one touch, two touches. I didn't never see them do any other things. They, they, they were just playing. They, some warm up and then they played. And the quality of the, 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 the play was incredible. And I think, well... He knows. Make it simple. Uh, I think at that time the coaches told me, make it just simple. Don't try to dribble too much. Don't try to make playing football that way, play football that way. So I learned a lot, of course. And you've managed for England at Anfield. So this is going to be a, a, a different sort of atmosphere at different occasions, it's a full house. Have you kind of thought what it's going to be like in your mind's eye when you, you come out with the players and, and see this packed house and such that this is out yeah. before that? Yeah, and you never walk alone, mm -hmm. which is magic. No, I'm looking forward to it and as they talked about the charity, makes it even better and uh, the result, yes, it's important that we win, but it's not that important. The important is the event in itself, 
and uh, I'm very honored and very thankful to Liverpool that they gave me this opportunity. And it's amazing because I never worked for Liverpool. I, I'm not like him. He's a hero. So I got invited and thank you for that. Thank it you. would be fantastic to do it in front of 30,000 and to do it in front of almost 60. It's just fantastic. It's important and, and how much it, it's caught the imagination of the public. Well, you see the power of football, the power of Liverpool, of course, and uh, like a friendly game and you take in 60,000 people. Amazing. Fantastic. John, from your perspective, when you look at, and you mentioned, of course, Steven Gerrard and the others, they can't be like they were 20 years ago, but if you look at <coughs> Fernando Torres and, and Steven Gerrard and, and renewing that partnership for however long uh, they get to play together during the match, and it, it sort of whets the appetite, doesn't it, when, it, when you look at what they achieved? Well, I don't know if you've seen Fernando Torres lately, but he's been in the gym. <laughs> so if there's any fighting, I'm thinking that he'll be okay. Uh, you know, when you talk about Sven managing at Anfield for England, of course, it is a home game, but it's a different game. Managing Liverpool in Liverpool and England in Liverpool is different. Uh, but, but they're competitive animals, footballers. And I suppose that is why I stopped playing, because I was competitive in my head, wanting to compete, but my body wasn't able to, so I was always getting injured. Whereas... As much as we are talking about it's a friendly match, um, they'll want to win. They'll want to win, <laughs> as would Ajax, and they're, they're fit, they're, they're young, and of course with those two coming back together, as well as all the players as well, it's going to be, it's going to be a fantastic occasion. Yeah, that competitive edge, it's, it, it's something that, that remains, isn't it, for footballers at whatever age they are, for, for as long as they can play. And even for when they can't play, and that's why you get injuries, because it's something <laughs> they can. So um, that is why I bowed out gracefully. Uh, but as, as I said, if you look at the players here, I've seen the squad, I've seen Ajax's squad, and, uh, and, and the telltale sign of how competitive it's going to be is that when someone was saying to me that they didn't recognize a lot of the Ajax squad, which means that they're young players <laughs> who, who may not necessarily have just retired. You know, We're hoping for the Dudu Boers and the, the Reggie Blinkers and all the old ones, but are going to be some, some young ones. But of course, we still have players around. I mean, I was in Guangzhou with Sammy Hoopia. Sammy Hoopia is now 50, but he's like... 30 years old, you know, and, and what happens in these matches is that you have 20 odd players, and you say, and at the start, even now, they're going to go, Oh, I'm, I'm a bit injured, I, I, I want to play 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You won't be able to get them off. <laughs> we've always had that problem. When we say, Come off, they know, because once they are on there, they don't want to come off. So, um, we've picked the team and we've put 45 minutes on some people and looked at and how it's going to go, but we know we're going to have a big problem getting people to come off the pitch. <laughs> and where are the demarcation lines drawn between? The decision makers tomorrow. Well, it depends <laughs> whether we win or we lose, if we're playing well or not. If if we're not doing well and we're losing, Sven's made all the decisions, <laughs> and he has to continue making the decisions. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Listen, the, the players are the ones really because they know how they feel. You know, at their age now, we can't be saying that we have to do this, they have to do that. So, you know, the players will really we'll set them up in whatever you want to do, four, four, two, whatever, and give them a certain guideline. But the players really manage themselves in that because whatever idea we have. If a player isn't able to do it for a fitness reason or whatever, he can't. And we haven't really studied the opposition, so we don't know much about that. Matt, you've been involved in these foundation games for, for a few years now. Has it kind of surprised you how much the whole process has moved forward? It's become part of the football calendar now. I think, yeah, I mean, definitely. I think the only club that I'm aware of that do them on a regular basis at Dark House is Man U and they do it every other year um, the fact that we are able to do it annually uh, to sell out uh, is amazing I think the and as I said earlier I think the colleagues at other clubs ask us about it and then they're, but they're cautious about doing it there's that disbelief I think we're helped by the fact as, as John said we've got such a, uh, a sort of a rich uh, black book of ex-players recently retired and, and perhaps some of the older guys but are still in unbelievable condition they're also competitive um, I think it's an opportunity as well for supporters. A lot of the, if you look at the, the the makeup of the fan base tomorrow, it will be a lot younger than a normal game. So if you've got normally got a season ticket, there's a lot of people who will come with their kids that can't usually come. Perhaps um, I've got, I know, you know, my, my little boys, eight, a lot of his friends are playing on different football teams and these schools are all coming to the game and they don't always get to come. So I think it's that. It's, it's more like a, a sort of a party atmosphere. 
Um, but the fact that we can sell out is just a testament to this club. It's, um, the, that, the support, yes, they come in to see some unbelievable players. I think they know that the, every ticket they buy goes to a good cause, which is part of it as well. The thing about it is that as much as we talk about, of course, the fans coming in, 59,000 is fantastic. When you talk about the Liverpool family, you have to look at it in its entirety. Look at where these players are coming from. Hmm. They're coming from all over the world. It's very easy when you have a Legends game and the players have to travel an hour on a, on a, on a, on a drive up or even live in the area. But you have players flying from all over the world who are coming here. And they're not coming here because they're getting paid a lot of money. They're coming here because that's what Liverpool means to them because of the, the fans and the city as well. You know, so for me, as much as, yes, it's 59,000, which is fantastic and that's amazing. Even more amazing for me is when these players are asked to come and they are halfway around the world, they just go, they're there. Must be a good night out in Liverpool, must it, man? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Good question. I don't know. I only know that uh, he always was a Liverpool fan and still still is. He phoned me the other day because he couldn't find the right channel in television. Bloody hell, he said. I can't find the channel and it's already gone five minutes. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know the, question, the answer on that question. What did he say when you said you were coming over to do this game? Ah... And the amazing thing, Liverpool, football, this game is going to be sent in television in Sweden, live, in a big uh, channel, it, not the biggest, but the next biggest. So he will see that game, of course. But that's uh, how big uh, Liverpool is and how big football is, charity. Yeah. Sven, who's the talk about as his sort of Liverpool heroes and the legends? Excuse me, I didn't understand you. So which players that your dad might have admired? Did he tell you, tell you of any players? Just uh, any, any, any players, as long as the shirt is the right shirt, he's happy. And he will not miss one game on television uh, when Liverpool playing. If other teams playing, well, he didn't see it, but Liverpool always, always. Well, I think it must be maybe the best atmosphere in the world, in all big uh, football stadiums I've been to. And uh, part of that is the song, when the players come out, you never walk alone. And that makes me like this, even today. And I've seen it live so many times and on television. So atmosphere is incredible. When Sven talks about that song, that was my, my my dad's funeral. That's the song we played. And mm. I, I didn't know. It's a musical from Carousel. It's got nothing to do with Liverpool as much as we think it is. It's a musical from Carousel, which is very emotive. And we all, well, of course, it's a Liverpool song. And I said to my mum, why are we playing You Never Walk Alone at my dad? She's going, oh, this was his favourite song. Because if you just listen to the words of it, take Liverpool out of the equation, it is the most emotive song going. So uh, we're fortunate that we've adopted it. <coughs> Yes, I should like to, but uh, the England game is tomorrow against Brazil. And uh, it's difficult to see both of them, so no, I'm not going to see that game. In the future, yes, of course. There's a Belgium game in a few days as well, then. Is there not another Ah, okay, no, I'm not going to see that oh, game. Sorry. I have to go back. For Actually, just on England in general, um, uh, what, do you, what do you make of Of England? I think they have a huge chance to win the Euro. France, good. Portugal, maybe. But uh, England, they have a very, very strong team. And uh, even if they have one or two or three injuries, they are still very, very strong. Because it's not the, the first 11. They can put in other players doing the same good job. So I think they have a really good chance. Kit, 
shit. Yeah, yeah. There's been a controversy over the flag that's been put by Nike on the uh, on the collar. Um, and people are very unhappy about it. Um, I don't know if that's something that you've seen at all. No, <laughs> I'm not into that. And uh, well, I have no opinion at all about that. But I have a strong opinion that England is very, very strong. <laughs> Well, there are so many, and uh, I had a lot of fights with Sir Alex, but I still admire him, and I always did, for what he did in Manchester United. That's, that's incredible what he did there, even if we fight it. Uh, you have so many. Liverpool has a brilliant manager in this moment, and uh, it's sad if he leaves, <laughs> because he's doing a great job. I think he's, I don't know him, I never met him, but I think he's a great motivator. It looks like that. But manager, a lot, a lot, a lot. Niels Liedholm. Niels Liedholm, yeah. What did you say? Seman. 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 Yeah, well, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> he had Lazio and I had Roma, and then. Uh, That's the enemy. Yeah. So when you're doing this, so when you're doing a documentary, and when you're going to Gothenburg to be celebrated in by the EFQA boy fans, uh, how do you choose your projects at the moment? <laughs> no, it's true that I'm uh, an English company doing a documentary, which would be ready in May, June, I think. Well, uh, I can answer that question. It's not very nice, maybe, but uh, I'm very, very happy and I'm very, very lucky that all the things I did well, they celebrate when I'm still in life. And that's not normal. You have to die and go to the funeral before people telling you how good you were. I'm happy. They're telling me when I'm still alive. So, well, sorry about the answer, but that's true. That true. And I'm very, very happy, of course. I'm very proud and very, yeah, very happy about what people are thinking. Makes my heart warm. <laughs> Player? Yeah, the, the current, the, the, the current. Well, you know, Norway, normally they always beat Sweden in skiing. Today they have so many good football players, so they beat Sweden even in football. And of course, the guy in Manchester City scoring that amount of goals. So if you ask any manager in the world to put up the money, I think he would be one of the most uh, looking after, looking for today. He's great, even if he's in Norwegian, he's great. <laughs> and, and Manchester City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, if you if you are the coach, the coach and manager of England, that's for me the biggest job you ever can have. We didn't win anything, uh, but I was extremely proud and happy every day I had that job, because I know it's one of the the biggest football job you can have in the world. Maybe Brazil can compete, maybe, but uh, England, it's it's very special. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Push the chair. Push the chair. Okay. Yep. Two, two managers. Where's the call? One of the manager. No, he is when we he is when he is when we get the sack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who was the other speed who went to Milan with Lee Pong? There were two of them, weren't there? To play, when they went to play in the 50s. But Neil Zeeho went to Milan, yes? To play. Were they two players? Two to Ham, Hammer, Ham. He played at Milan, didn't he?